Welcome back everybody, thanks for stopping by. In this video we're going to be taking what we learned in the HTTP section and we're going to be leveraging DNS to block domain level connectivity. So what I'm actually going to go do now is I'm going to go and show run service policy. I'm going to remove the service policy that we have currently deployed on the DMZ interface so that when we go to test this out to make sure that things are working the way that they're expected to be that we won't run into any unforeseen problems. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out and open up Firefox again and this time we're going to be doing domain level uh, filtering so that means we're going to be able to go to blogspot.com and uh, we're going to allow that uh, we're going to block that connection but we're going to also inspect on like Google and Gmail and MSN, we're going to add them all in there in the uh, effort to sh prove that HTTPS connections are allowed to go through but HTTP connections are blocked. So we're going to type in the Riker. I'll finish that one out and that'll come up pretty quick because uh, it's, it's able to resolve. Then we'll open up uh, Google.com and then we will open up uh, we'll open up blog blogspot.com and that's pretty much where it dials in so uh, we'll also open up msn msn.com so with all of these open this will just prove that the connectivity is in place and that everything is working the way that it should be so once we have that dialed in, then we can go to the next level of talking about DNS inspection. So if we come in here and we do a show run policy map, you'll see that there is a, uh, a default um, preset in here. Now it's, you, don't, you see it right here, it says policy map type inspect DNS pre -D preset DNS map, which is matching on a maximum length of 512 bytes for the DNS message and at the client side it's auto for its scaling and then that is tied to an inspection inspection engine for DNS so DNS by default is not inspected via, via the UDP method mechanism it's a its own unique little um, unicorn inside of ASA's inspection policy that was supposed to be a little bit of sarcasm there if you didn't pick that up so what we can do is we can inspect the policy. So if we go back here, we do a show service policy global inspect DNS, you'll, you're expecting to see a bunch of um, connectivity. So what this means is uh, you'll see a lot of packets going out and this DNS guard here is basically a way for DNS, whenever a query goes out and a reply comes back in, once that session has been uh, completed, then the, the session is torn down. It's in an effort to try to prevent things from happening, like the DNS hijacking and things like that. The NAT rewrite is happening, by, it happens by default, where yeah, with, with an enabled, the DNS uh, entries are mapped from one uh, IP to the other, via the net capability. Now, one thing we're going to dive into right away is diving into domain level filtering, which is going to take the same logic of the um, URL filtering and the uh, globally and at the interface level, uh, except for this time we're going to be matching on the DNS information. I don't know why that's taking so long to load. Okay, that's loaded. Google's loaded, blogspot.com. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna type in just blogger.com. See if that comes up any faster. And I can create a regex uh, instance for that. So you notice that blogger turns to an HTTPS connection. MSN.com is finally starting to load, um, stuff like that. That's gonna take a little bit longer than expected but blogger.com is now up, but that's an HTTPS connection. So this is where it should terminate to, but when you type in blog spot, it's, uh, there's a redirect thing that goes on in, in the background. So msn.com should be 
coming up. Let's go ahead and resync that guy. Try to get it to pull up. So, all right, now that that's pulling up, let us go through the configuration of what we need to match on. So, going back to our regex, we're going to be leveraging regex again. So, show run regex. And the regex, we have a blogspot.com filter enabled. We also, um, we did a, I tested a blog spot with the, the break sequence here, but we're not trying to match on a, U, a, a URL anymore. We're trying to match on DNS. So we want to block those DNS records from going out. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to call a few of these, not every one of them, but the majority of them. And in this case here, we're going to type in class map. Uh, instead of using the HTTP class map of type inspect, we're going to be using DNS. So what we're going to do is we're going to say class map type inspect. In this case here, it's going to be DNS. And we're going to say match any. And we're going to type in class map DNS inspect. Or actually, I should say inspect DNS. And I'm going to come in here and we're going to say match. And we'll say domain name of regex. And we're going to say, um, we will say blog spot domain. We will also say, and that's the only domain that I really have defined here. Every one of these other ones are, are URL specific. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create one more. I'm going to type in regex. Regex and the name of the regex is going to be, we'll say uh, Google. And here we're going to have to specify the, the link of google.com. So we'll enter that one and then we'll create another regex for MSN and this one will be msn.com. So logically what should happen is when these domains are looked up, they should be dropped. But that in, but the problem with that though is these domain lookups are going to be uh, are going to be sent out via UDP. So logically it should be better than doing URL filtering because instead of a URL filtering where DNS has already worked, the DNS requests come back in and then you get an IP address that you point towards. What's gonna end up happening here, or what should happen, is you look up msn.com, you look up google.com, and the UDP 53, so the DNS, the clear text DNS requests go out and come back in, but as they go out, they should be dropped, right? They should be dropped by the inspection engine as you're leaving to look up those specific UR, uh, those domain names, so they can't go out get an IP response. So they should hit the firewall and get dropped before they can exit the firewall, go out to Google DNS and respond with that information. So we'll do a show run class map of type inspect DNS and I will log back into this guy and I will tell, go regex and I will say here, we'll say, um, what did I use? Google and I'll type in uh, MSN. So those are going to be the three matches I, ma I make matches on. So we have those three specific matches. So now I will log, I'll exit out of the class map and I'll go into the policy map, type inspect, and this guy will be DNS on a policy name of policy map uh, inspect DNS. And we will come in here, and then underneath the, um, when we, uh, we've got the, the message defined. But here's the interesting thing about this. There's already one done. We do show run policy map. If we look right here, this pre, this guy right here, this preset DNS map. We can actually modify this specific policy map, which is actually already called by the global service policy. We can actually call this one. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to come in here and type in policy map, type inspect DNS pre uh, preset DNS map. We're going to log into this guy. And what we need to do is underneath here, we need to specify a class, a class. And we're going to call the class map that we just created, this inspect DNS. We're going to call it. And then underneath here, we're going to type in drop dash connection and log. Okay. Now that we've done that, that automatically applies or at least it should automatically apply 
we do a show run policy map, we should see that um, it automatically applies that particular variation to that, I should say, the addition of that configuration, it should automatically apply that to the policy map. So if we do a show service policy for the global inspection of DNS, we look at that, notice how now we have all these connections, uh, it's doing its normal operations plus any of these DNS lookups, right? So then we should be able to come back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a show log and I'll type in include uh, slash 53, which should be a bunch of uh, connections outbound for DNS lookup. All these should be blocked. So I'm going to go ahead and do a clear log, clear logging buffer. So we don't have anything currently in there. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close this out. I'm going to go ahead and open up Firefox again. Give that a moment. And it's going to take a couple of minutes for all this to process through because it is a lot of data on a very slow network that's got to pull down. So I'm going to go, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull up um, blogspot.com and hit the enter key to that guy. So that's going to go out and we should see messages going out. And now you'll notice that things like these specific entries, MSN, Google, and then blogspot.com, the domains, they're getting dropped. That's what you should see. And the reason why you should see that is because they are all getting matched. So blogspot's not working. And we should be able to go to the problem that we have now here. And this is actually is going to backfire on me. If I right click here and I go, actually, if I come onto the, the command prompt and I hit the IP config forward slash all, you'll notice that my DNS is pointed to Google, right? So that's going to be a problem for us when we try to go look up Google. It should fail. So let me go do this. Let me do a show run regex. Let me make a small modification to our configuration. But before I do that, let me just make sure that Google is actually going to drop. Google.com and hit the enter key. That should not work because the entry going out should be blocked by this. And it is. So Google's not working. And if we look here at 53, uh, include. Oh, you know what? Um, logging enable and show logging. Okay, so if we don't, you can ignore that. That's some botnet filtering in the background. And matter of fact, uh, I've got to go and that's going to get blocked. So all of them are going to get blocked. So let me let me go modify that real quick. Show run regex. And, well, okay. So I'll see all these dro drop DNS requests. They're all going out. That's a good sign. That means DNS filtering is working. So I'm going to type in logging enable, control A, no logging enable. So show run regex. I've got to come in here and I've got to create a regex for Gmail, which I think I already have. Yeah, I've got this one. I will actually modify this one right here to be gmail.com. So if I go to gmail.com, that should be, uh, that will swap that out. So we'll do show run class map, type inspect DNS, and then we'll log into this one. I'll grab this line right there. I will pull this one out because I want Google, I want DNS to actually work. And then I'll pull this one out and we'll go to the end of the line, pull out Google out and put in DNS Gmail in its place. So show run class map type inspect DNS. Do a show service policy 
global inspect DNS. DNS. Excellent. So now it's been swapped out for Gmail. So now if I go back to here and try to resynchronize it, this should be dropped. So Blogspot should now go from 30 to 34. So that's not being allowed to go through. I come back over here to Google. This one should work. Looking up google.com, server not found. Uh, what about what about msn.com? MSN is also blocked. So what I will do is I will try. Let's try dogpile.com. Try to do some. That one looks like it's going to. That's going to work. Dogpile is not restricted. And that one should work just fine. And it does. Dogpile works just fine. What I want to work on now is, why is, oh, because I spelled it wrong. Google.com is not Google forward slash com. It's Google.com. That pulls up, that resolves, and that pulls up right away. Now, if I go hit the, go to this next tab, and I type in uh, gmail.com. Let's see if that'll work. And if I hit the up arrow, we'll be able to determine really quick. One packet going to gmail.com, two packets, three packets. It's looking for it, but it can't find it. Now, that doesn't mean that it won't completely find everything. That'll just mean that certain aspects of it won't come back. So it'll partially load, but not completely load. So there's other things like uh, Google Cloud and other URLs and other content, usercontent.com, that will be allowed to go through. So in this case here, Gmail itself explicitly will not be allowed or will not be completely blocked. But anything that goes specifically to the gmail.com domain will be blocked. Anything that goes to anything that, Google, uh, that Gmail pulls from that is not gmail.com as a domain will be permitted through. And so that's the key thing here. So this is how you would apply it globally to the already existing preset DNS map underneath the inspect, uh, the class, class inspection default uh, class map on the class of DNS. So that's how all that comes into play. Now, if we want to change that and do what we did on the HTTP inspection, we can do that as well. We can do a show run policy map, and I can come here on this preset DNS guy right here. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to grab this guy right here up to this line. I'm gonna right click in, and I'm gonna type in no class, class map inspection DNS. So that's gonna remove the capability. So now I should be able to go out to here and refresh the page. Waiting for Blogger, Blogger pulls up right away. Google pulls, uh, new, uh, all these other ones pulled up right away, and that's exactly what I'm expecting to see. Now, this is different than HTTP because we're doing a DNS lookup. So what I should be able to do now is, let me go ahead and log back out of this. I can say a class map of cm underscore DNS, and underneath this guy, I can type in match any, because I, I don't want to match on just specifically DNS. I want to just be able to match on any type of traffic. I want to let the inspection engine see the DNS traffic. So I want the layer seven capability to, to come into play and then say, you know what? You're not allowed to go ahead and go out. Even if you are not matching on D, uh, UDP 53, I want you to still go out. Then I can call a policy map of PM underscore DNS. And I can call the class, uh, class of CM underscore DNS. And I'll type inspect inspect and I'll say DNS here. I want to, I want to inspect the DNS uh, capability and I want to go a step further and I want to match on layer seven inspection. So I'll do that. So, oh, that's the wrong, wrong one. So I'll type in PM inspect. 
That's that's what I need to do. Now that I've got that that policy map created, so show run policy map. The policy map of it's right up here at the top. Policy map PM DNS calls the class of class map DNS, which is being is which is telling us to which is telling the ASA to inspect DNS communication and call the inspection of DNS as an application. So this we're up to this point right here. This is all layer three, layer four, right? The moment you take and you add in this line with this specific uh, inspection policy, then you're going layer seven. So we'll go ahead and do a service policy. And that service policy of PM DNS is right there. We'll type in interface DMZ VLAN 30 and hit the enter key. So now I get to go in here and type in show service policy uh, interface DMZ VLAN 30 of uh, type inspect uh, DNS and hit the enter key. And so now we will be specifically looking for these variables. So I'm going to come back over here to blogger. Now if I do blogger, the problem I'm going to run into is blogger.com is not blogspot.com. Right? And if we look inside of the uh, show run class map of type inspect DNS, we should be being able to match on uh, MSN and DNS Gmail. So MSN should be blocked, theoretically. So let's go ahead and do, do that. Let's look up one more. And this time here, we're going to be using uh, MSN.com. So that's going to try to go out there and look for that. And if we hit the up arrow, we have uh, let's see that loaded. Okay, what did I not do correctly? Um, okay, so okay, so the class map that we called the show run class map, um, this one here simply matches on any type of traffic. So let's go modify him real quick to match on DNS traffic. So, and we'll say uh, match port uh, UDP EQ to domain. Or in this case here, we're gonna say 53. And we'll say, um, in this case here, any, and we'll type in no match any. So, So I need to come in here and apply this command there. Okay, so that's better. So we'll do a show service policy again. So we're inspecting DNS. Inspect DNS. Okay, so let me do a show run. Uh, so it's calling this. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't look right. Let me go ahead and close this out. There's some stuff that's missing. So let me see here. That doesn't look right. So I have to go back to show run uh, policy map. of type inspect DNS. So we have that configured. Oh, that's my problem. So, okay, so what I, the, the mistake that I made was uh, the policy map type inspect um, doesn't have a class map called. 
So I just assumed that I I stopped configuring this policy map to just because this one already existed. So I've got to come underneath here and go to this. And underneath here I can call class map or class and what is the name of that class map? That class map is this guy right here. Inspect DNS here. And then from here, I can go and uh, that calls the class. And underneath here, I need to say drop dash connection and log. So that's what I that's what I didn't do earlier. So now, if I do a show service policy interface DMZ VLAN 30 type, I'm sorry, inspect type or uh, inspect DNS. Now it shows up. That's what I didn't do earlier. I didn't have it mapped correctly. So little things like this can definitely hurt you if you're not paying attention to it. So we will try to go out and we're matching on Blogspot MSN and DNS Gmail. So here I'm gonna come out here and type in blogspot.com. We'll go to that. We'll hit the enter key and then we will, and we have three packets matching on that already. So that domain should not load give that a moment to do its thing and figure itself out. Um, usually fails pretty quick. We do a show logging uh, pipe include 53 and if we scroll down to the bottom here we should see a bunch of inspector disconnected drop packet which is exactly what we want to see. So that's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's uh, deny, uh, let's see. So it's working the way it's expected to. We have a bunch of denies going out, uh, stuff like that. That's good. The next one we have to do is uh, we'll do msn.com. So msn should be blocked as well, msn.com. So it's going to try to find it. MSN is loading. There's five packets matched on that. So some things about MSN will will work. Some things will not. As you can see, um, it'll take a little bit to load everything, but MSN is loading to a degree. Um, oh, actually, it got denied completely. Okay, that, that's good. Let's see if 14 packets. Okay, and um, DNS Gmail got blocked as well. I don't know how that came into play, but it did. Um, and then we'll come in here and do gmail.com. So the, the beautiful thing here is this is all live internet connectivity. So there's nothing in here that I am spoofing or anything like that. It's all legit internet connectivity out and the packet filtering. If our, if our logic didn't work, these filters wouldn't show any packets being hit. So uh, Gmail is going to load, and we're going to see a fair amount of packets hitting it. So in all in all, everything has worked that we've tested. And what we have to do now is not much. We're in a good position now to where we've covered all of the major inspection capabilities of the ASA that we wanted to take a look at. There is a couple of other things like botnet traffic filtering and some other stuff that we'll dive into and take a look exactly how that comes into play. Then we have threat detection, like I mentioned, and then we'll get through um, the, uh, what else is there? QoS. Um, now there's one other thing that um, the MPF can do besides what we've done so far and the threat detection, the botnet traffic filtering, and then, um, which technically, um, the, well, botnet traffic filtering does map directly to the MPF, and so does threat detection. Uh, from what I've, from what I understand, it does. There's some, um, it's a, it's an advanced capability. Um, the, all of them have something to do related with how the MPF works. The QoS will be, a little bit different than this. So instead of us trying to filter traffic or prevent problems from occurring, we're going to be trying to 
control how the traffic going through the firewall is prioritized and stuff like that. So uh, there was a question in, uh, there was direct message to me about the videos, when I'm gonna start doing VPN. And the answer to that question is, once I get done with all of the ASA stuff, which I still have the rest of the advanced inspection and the firewall capabilities, once that is complete and I have a transparent firewall and multi-context mode done, once all of that is wrapped up and we have everything knocked out, then I will move on to iOS firewall. I'll get iOS firewall knocked out completely. And then there's going to be some other uh, miscellaneous topics thrown in here and there. But we're going to be spending quite a bit of time on iOS firewall because there's a lot of stuff that we need to deal with um, and stuff like that. But um, beyond that, oh, there's some other, there's a couple other features here. Let me go and look them up real quick because they are specific to, uh, let me look this up real quick. Um, I am using Safari O'Reilly. So after, so once we're done inspecting traffic, there is uh, proxy services. So basically uh, configuring authenticated users as they try to use internet connectivity. So we'll be diving into that. Then there's QoS. Uh, that'll all pop in there somehow. And then there's transparent firewall. Then there's multiple context mode. I don't know how deep I'm gonna go on that yet. Um, but we'll dive into it a little bit. And then we've already covered high availability. And once that's pretty much done, there's a couple of analysis things we can do like packet tracer and stuff like that. I really haven't shown you guys how to do anything with that yet. Um, but there's that. Um, beyond that, that's pretty much it. Um, then we'll dive into iOS firewall. iOS firewall doesn't have a ton of stuff. There's NAT, there's zone-based firewall, there's ACLs, there's um, some CBAC, some TCP intercept type stuff. So that, that's going to take a fair amount of time to cover, but it's not quite as involved as ASA. So once that is all com covered and taken care of, then we're going to transition into the VPN course and uh, dive into how, how all of that works. That itself is going to take a while to go through because there's a lot in VPN. So somewhere in all of that time frame, I will be taking the 200, the 206 exam to try to get that knocked out. So this is a deep dive for me so that once I'm done with my CCNP and security and I have that certification under my belt, I can then step into the next, uh, start diving into CCIE security and um, I won't be spending as much time going through the core fundamentals. It'll be like, okay, well, how do I get this to work and how do I get that to work, that type of stuff. So uh, there will be some things that I'll have to dive into when it comes to that, but you know, uh, other other types of inspection and stuff like that. But there will be it'll take a little while for me to get through all of that material. So um, that's pretty much it, guys. I want to thank you guys all for hanging out with me and stopping by and checking the, everything out. And until next time, guys, take it easy.